Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for January 17th, 2019. I have been teaching on heaven on earth. I've been teaching about the kingdom of God. And today's message is called a new way to live. As a believer, once you're born again, everything is new, but you just don't know how to live like the reality that you've experienced in Christ Jesus. So you must learn how to experience this new world, this new reality. It is a new way to live. Yesterday, we looked at Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 through 20. In that passage, the Apostle Paul contrasted the way that people down here in this world live and the way that we're supposed to live because we're citizens of heaven. He was saying, listen, there's two kinds of way, uh, ways to live, right? So he says the people down here, their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is their shame because their mind is set only on earthly things. But he says, we are different. Our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await our Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. When he was writing to the believers in Colossae, he says, set your mind on things above. So while these, thing, these people that live down here, their mind is set on earthly things, our mind is set on things above. We are different because we are citizens of heaven. We're supposed to live different. Once our status changed, citizenship changed, our conduct is supposed to change to be able to match our status. In John 17, Jesus prayed a prayer. It's actually, I call John 17 the Lord's Prayer, not Matthew 6, because this is the prayer that Jesus prayed. And in this prayer, Jesus said this, John 17, 15 and 16, he says, my prayer, he's praying to the Father, my prayer is not that you, Father, take them out of the world, but that you protect them in the world from the evil one. They are not of the world even as I am not of this world. So Jesus was saying, listen, I am in this world, but not of this world. And my disciples, my followers, they're in this world, but they're not of this world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. No, but they're not from it either. So they're in this world. They're not of this world. We got to get that, that we are citizens of heaven. We're from a whole nother place. I'm going to drive that point home today. And in Paul's second letter to the believers in Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 20, in that passage, he says, when anyone is in Christ, it's a whole new world. The old is gone. The new has come. He says, through Christ, God made peace between himself and us. He was reconciling the world to himself through Christ Jesus. And then now that Jesus is gone, we're the continuation of his incarnation. He says, now he has given us, you and I, this work. What is the work? Well, to bring people to peace with him, to reconcile the world through him. Why? Because Paul says we are his ambassadors sent from heaven to speak for Christ down here in this world. It is like God is calling people to himself through us. We are ambassadors from heaven assigned to the earth to represent heaven down here on this planet. You are a citizen of heaven if you're born again, and it's time for you to embrace it. So what does this mean to you today? I'm going to share four things with you this morning under the theme, a new way to live. I want you to open up your heart now to what God is saying. You ready? Here we go. Four things. Number one, I shared with you yesterday because I like to teach by precept and example. So I'm giving you scripture after scripture after scripture. Let me give you some examples that I pray that you can just relate to, right? Because you can't reach someone that you can't relate to. And if, some, if it's something, if it's a truth that you can relate to, then, then really that's a truth that you can receive. And so I want to share it with you in a way that maybe you can relate to. So I shared with you yesterday that my, both my wife and my mother became naturalized citizens of the United States of America. They, they became citizens of the United States by pledging their allegiance to this country. Now, once they did, they received new citizenship. And watch this. They were no longer citizens of where they came from. Once they received new, new citizenship, they were no longer citizens of the country of their origin or the country of their birth. So today, when my wife visits Dominica, where she was born, um, she is actually just visiting. Even though she was born there, when she goes there now, she's not from there anymore. She's just visiting. When she goes there, watch this, it is obvious to everyone when she goes there that she's not from there no more. It's obvious to everyone when she goes there that she lives in the United States. You know why? Because she looks like the U.S. She sounds like the U.S., right? There's something, oh no, you, you, from, you from the States now, right? Because she has, watch this, she has embraced her new citizenship status and she has embraced the culture of her new nation. And because of it, now when she goes, she now represents the United States in Dominica, even though she was born there. 
So let me further drive home this point. If my wife, who is now a U.S. citizen, visits Dominica and something were to happen to her while she's there, it is an international incident. So now, if something happens, if the, if, the, if the government of Dominica were to do something to my wife while she's there, let's say they lock her up, it's now an international incident and the United States can get involved and the United States can actually send people to get her out and to bring her back home. You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm driving this point. Why? Because the reason why the United States will, will get involved is because she's no longer from there. She's from here. And so since she's one of us, United States, the United States is going to protect the citizens of this nation and say, no, that's an international incident. Let me get involved. I'm, I'm trying to make this very clear. When something happens to you in this world, you're not, you, you were born here, but you're not from here anymore. So if something happens to you in this world, if Satan tries to do something to you in this world, it is an international incident. You got to understand that you are in this world, but you're not of this world. God can send angels from heaven to get you out of whatever you got yourself into. Glory to God, because you are now a citizen of heaven. You have angelic protection. You are getting your protection from another realm, from another world. You are from there. You're not from here. You're supposed to live different. Do you get it? It's a whole new way to live. Number two, you are in this world, but if you're born again, you're not of it. And that's what Jesus was saying in John 17. And you, if you are a citizen of heaven, then 2 Corinthians 5 says that you are an ambassador from heaven assigned to the earth, assigned to represent what? What? You are assigned down here to represent up there. So, so you're supposed to walk into every meeting, every conversation, every, all the activity that you engage in on a daily basis. You're down here representing up there. So you got to act like where you're from. You're down here representing up there. You got to act like where you're from. I remember uh, this has nothing. To, this isn't part of today's word, but I'm just slide this in for free. I, I remember when um, when uh, cut up jeans were in style. Well, now they're back in style. But I'm saying back when I was a, a teenager, cut up jeans were in style. And so so I didn't have any cut up jeans. So I took my favorite pair of jeans. Oh, my God. I took my favorite pair of jeans and I cut these things up. But I didn't want like. I had a razor, I cut them, but then once I cut them with a razor, it just looked like a clean cut that looked dumb. So then I had to like fray all the little edges and all of that, and it took me a long time to get the jeans looking perfect. And so I had the jeans looking good, man, I was looking good. And so we lived in a small apartment in, in, in Brooklyn, and so, so for me to get out of my room to get outside, I had to pass through the kitchen, and my mother was always in the kitchen. And so, so I put my jeans on, and I'm walking out like I'm going to try to get outside, and my mother was in the kitchen doing something, and she said, where you think you're going with those jeans on? I said, well, I'm going outside. I'm going outside to play. And she said, now with those jeans on? I said, well, why? She said, because you're my son. And the problem is, she said, if I could let you go outside and look stupid, for yourself, I would let you go outside and look stupid. If you could just look stupid for you, then that'd be fine. The problem is that you represent me and everybody knows that you're my son. And so if you, if I let you go outside looking stupid, then you're going to be represent me looking stupid because you're my son and you represent me and you don't just represent yourself. And I'm telling you that you're a citizen of heaven. So you don't just represent yourself. You represent God. And so when you go into every meeting, every conversation, all the activity that you engage in on a daily basis, you are representing him. You are representing up there down here. So don't don't act crazy. Don't look stupid. You should act like where you're from. You are a citizen of heaven. You are representing heaven in the earth on a daily basis. Say amen to that. Glory to God. Number three, you are sent from heaven, uh, from God <laughs> to represent heaven, his kingdom agenda on this planet on a daily basis. You are called, appointed, and anointed to display heaven on earth. That is your charge. Will you accept it? Number four, and finally, once you're born again, you are kingdom you are a citizen of heaven, right? You are a kingdom citizen, but you just don't understand how to live like one. So, so you got this new citizenship status, but you don't really know what it means yet. That's why you go to church. You go to church to learn about the kingdom. So church, Jesus established the kingdom, not the church, but you go to church to learn about the kingdom. So, so you're going to church so that you can learn about the kingdom and you're going there and, and, and there's some things that you got to learn. Here's some basics. I just mentioned a few this morning. When you go to church, you should learn the culture of the kingdom. What is the culture? The culture of the kingdom is a culture of honor. So in the kingdom of God, it functions on a whole culture of honor where I honor people. We're supposed to honor people for whom God called them to be. And you're not tripping over their conduct. You're not tripping over their mistakes because just like God doesn't trip over your mistakes, you are honoring them for the call that's on their life because God does the same thing for you. Then another thing you learn is while honor is the culture, 
Faith is the currency. You use currency to make an exchange, right? So how do you make an exchange in the kingdom of heaven? Well, you make an exchange with faith. By faith, you, you lay hold of what God has already provided by grace. Faith is how you make an exchange. You use your faith to lay hold of God's grace and you'll say, oh, God reveals to you what's already yours by grace, unearned, unmerited, undeserved. And then you say, okay, well, I'm going to release my faith to lay hold of God's grace and you make an exchange. So, so culture faith is honor. Currency is faith. And then the whole foundation of the kingdom is love. You, the whole foundation... Faith works by love. Galatians 5 and 16. Everything in the kingdom works by love. It doesn't matter what you do if you're not doing it in love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Everything that you do in the kingdom of God, you got to do it in love. I'm going to stop here for today. But just three things about the kingdom of God. I talked to you about the culture. That's honor. I talked to you about the currency. That's faith. I talked to you about the foundation. That's love. Everything in the kingdom is built and rooted in God's love. You know why? Because love is not something that God has. Love is not something that God gives. Love is who God is. Love is who God is. Let's, let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I'm talking about a whole new way to live. Speak this over your life now. In faith from a believing heart, say this. Say, Father, I thank you for making me a citizen of heaven. I can now say that I was born here, but I'm not from here anymore. I am from heaven. I am in your kingdom. I am in this world, but I am not of this world. Heaven is my home, and I represent you daily on this planet. I am not concerned about going to heaven when I die. Heaven is already my home. My focus is on bringing heaven to the earth every day of my life. My life is a demonstration of heaven in this world. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, sign up, get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. I trust that this series is helping you. I trust that this series, in this series, you are opening your heart to this kingdom reality. We're supposed to live different. We're we are citizens of heaven and we're supposed to show people what heaven is like. We're supposed to experience days of heaven on earth. Before you leave the screen, please share this message with someone that you know, share it on your social media, on your timeline, with your friends. I love you and God loves you. Go now. And remember, you got to represent down here what it's like up there. God bless you.